Wouldn't it be great if we could skip all those expensive, time-intensive, and invasive medical procedures and just make sick people better without doing anything at all? Well, it turns out in a very unexpected way, you can. But it's not exactly what you think it's going to be. This is going to be the story of how one comedian in the early part of the 20th century made such an unexpectedly insightful joke that we can actually use the same insights to trick us into thinking we've helped sick people by doing nothing. When, of course, that's not really possible. Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and in this episode, we're going to talk about the Will Rogers paradox and how it can seriously mislead us. But first, let's talk about a joke made about migration from the Dust Bowl to California in the early 20th century. Will Rogers, a famous comedian at the time, made this joke. When the Okies left Oklahoma and moved to California, they raised the average intelligence of both states. Not exactly the funniest joke by today's standards, but basically he's saying that when some of the folks from Oklahoma moved to California, they made both places smarter. But how can that be? How can one group leaving a state and moving to another state make both states smarter? That seems like an impossibility, and yet it's actually completely possible and is the root of the Will Rogers paradox, named as such because of this joke. Let's for a moment humor Will Rogers and take the first premise of this joke at face value, that the people living in California are all pretty dumb. Side note, it's a joke, so please don't think either Will Rogers or I think that Californians are actually dumb. Anyway, we might represent that observation on two line charts like this. People on the left are dumb, and people on the right are smart. When Will Rogers says that Californians are dumb, he's basically saying that most of them live on the left side of this line, and that Oklahomans live on the right side of this. And to make this super concrete, let's assign each of these people an intelligence score from 0 to 100. We can then compute the average intelligence for people in each state, and we find that Californians in this example have an average intelligence of 15, and Oklahomans have an average intelligence of 52. Which brings us to the second premise of this joke, which is that the people who would possibly choose to leave Oklahoma for California must be the dumbest bunch of all the Oklahomans. Maybe these folks here. If we do that and we recalculate the average intelligence of each state, we now see that California went up in average intelligence to 21 points, and Oklahoma also went up in intelligence to 57.75 points. By moving the least intelligent people from Oklahoma to California, both states got smarter. This is a really weird situation if you step back to think about it. We moved relatively dumb people from one state to another, which you'd think would make the state receiving the dumb people worse off. But because all the people in this hypothetical California were even dumber, this move improved the average intelligence for everyone. The catch, of course, is that across all people, pooling across Californians and Oklahomans, nothing changed. The average intelligence of everyone was 33.5, and it remains 33.5 regardless of who moves where. And this is the point where you might be asking, what the heck does this have to do with saving people's lives? Well, before we get to that, if you could take a moment to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out, I'd really appreciate it. With that said, let's see how the Will Rogers Paradox makes it look like we're helping sick people, even when we're actually doing nothing at all. Leaving bad jokes behind, let's look at something a bit more serious, survival times of cancer patients. Over the past several decades, the technology to detect cancer has increased dramatically. In the past, only large, aggressive cancers were detectable with the screening tests available at the time. But today, with major medical advances, even the faintest cancers are detectable. That is unequivocally good news. Though, it is worth pointing out that diseases aren't just binary, like you have it or you don't. Rather, there's a spectrum for disease. For cancer, the cancer could be highly local or it could be highly metastatic, meaning it's spreading throughout the body. Those early tests could detect many metastatic cancers, but really couldn't find the more localized ones. Newer tests, however, are much better able to detect local cancers, potentially allowing for early intervention and treatment. And it's this new ability to detect less severe cancers that brings us back to the Will Rogers paradox. The punchline is going to be that as you develop better tests, you increase the life expectancy both of people who have cancer and those who don't, without actually treating anyone. Let's see how that can be. This line graph is going to represent predicted life expectancy for an individual. The more to the right, the longer someone is likely to live. Unfortunately, with extremely aggressive and metastatic cancers, life expectancy decreases. So people who are diagnosed with severe cancer, their life expectancy might fall here. And for similarly aged people who are not diagnosed with cancer, their life expectancies might fall here. 
In this case, the average life expectancy for those who have cancer is 20 years and 50 years for those who don't. But now let's say that a new test is developed that can detect some less severe cancers, ones that weren't detectable previously, and one that might decrease life expectancy a bit, but not nearly as much as full-blown aggressive cancer. Well, for this new, more sensitive test, it might detect low levels of cancer in these individuals, the ones who already had slightly lower life expectancies, but for who, with our old test, cancer wasn't detectable. Well, now they are classified as those who have cancer, and so we move them over to the other group. And now hopefully you see that this looks a lot like our examples of Californians and Oklahomans. When a new, better test is able to detect even faint cancers, in our example, the new average life expectancy for those with cancer goes up to 27.5 years, and for those with no cancer it goes up to 55 years. And remember, nothing actually changed. Everyone still lives the same amount of time and everyone still has whatever disease they previously had. All that changed is that our diagnostic test got a bit better. And when it got better, with no actual medical intervention, it looks like those with and those without cancer are going to live longer. Though again, to be clear, the average life expectancy for all these people is 35 years, regardless of which test we use. The point of all this is that whenever we see improvements resulting from changing classifications, be it changes in statehood or changes in diagnostic status, we have to be vigilant in seeing if those changes are meaningful or if they suffer from the Will Rogers paradox. Critically, just pausing and seeing if whatever metric you're using changes across all data points, not just the localized ones, is a good way to see if the paradox is in play or not. And these aren't the only two examples where something like this appears. But I want to hear from you. Where else have you seen the Will Rogers Paradox creep up? Post a comment below, and I'll make sure to keep the conversation going. Finally, as always, thanks so much for